Hi guys, we're going to learn about proving angles congruent to the six. Properties of angle congruence. Remember, angle congruence is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. For example, reflexive for any angle A. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Symmetric. If angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. Transitive. If angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle A, then angle A is congruent to angle C. Using the transitive property, given. Measurement of angle 3 is 40. Angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Angle 2 and 3 are congruent. So right here, 1, 2 congruent, 2, 3 congruent. Proof, angle 1 is 40. Here are the statements. First one, angle 3 is 40. Angle 1 and 2 are congruent. Angle 2 and 3 are congruent. That is given. First one is always given. Next one is angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. That is transitive property of congruence. Please write transitive, transitive property of congruence. Because if angle 1 and 2 is congruent, angle 2 and 3 is congruent, 1, 3 are congruent. Transitive property of congruence. Next, measurement angle 1 is equal to measurement angle 3. Definition of congruent angle. When two angles are congruent, they're equal to each other. Measurement is equal. The last one, you have substitution property or transitive property of equality. So, therefore, because angle M, measurement angle uh, 1 is 40, instead of measurement angle 3, we replace with 40. So, that's substitution property. Or you can write transitive because angle 1 and 3 is the same. 3 and 1 is same, 1 is 40, so angle 3 is 40, so that's transitive. You can write substitution, or you can write transitive property of equality. Important new theorems. Vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. Right angle congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent. So we need to know these two important theorems. When you have a vertical angles, they're, they're the ones that are across from each other. They're always congruent. The right uh, angle congruent. All right angles are congruent. So because they're 90 and 90, they're all congruent. So if angle, a and, uh, angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Proof of vertical angles theorem. So here is given, angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, right here, 1 and 3. Prove that these two are congruent. So here is a statement. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. That's given, right here. So you always start with given. Angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pair, right here. Linear means 180 next to each other. Angle 2 and angle 3 are linear pair, which is right next to each other. This is the definition of linear pair. Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. 180. Angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. This is the, uh, the reason is linear pairs are supplementary. So any linear pair is a supplementary So angle 1 plus angle 2 is 180. Angle 2 plus angle 3 is 180. So you can say these two when you add them, that's 180. These two when you add them, that's 180. So that is definition of supplementary angles. Angle 1 plus angle 2, measurement angle 1 and measurement angle 2, plus measurement angle 2 plus measurement angle 3, they're equal to each other. So these two plus 
these two are both 180, 180. So that's the substitution property because you're substituting 180, 180, uh, in, uh, uh, these instead of 180, this instead of 180. Or you can say because these two are 180, these two are 180, 1 and 3 are 180. So that's transitive property. You can write substitution. Last one, that means angle, uh, measurement angle 2 is equal to measurement angle 2. So that is reflexive property of equality. Lastly, that means angle 1 and 3 are equal to each other. So that is subtraction property of equality, subtra. And last one, you have angle 1 and 3, that's they are congruent, which is the proof. So we prove that the uh, reason is definition of congruent. So I actually passed that paper for these um, while you're working on the flip grid. So it was on your paper. So if before you left, if you grabbed it, it says uh, chapter one and two theorems and postulates, and uh, you need to look at that. But if you don't have that, I can give you another one when you come back uh, from the long weekend. So let's take a look at this one. Proof of the right angle congruence uh, theorem. Given one angle one and two are right angles, prove that angle one and two are congruent. They're both 90, so they're congruent, right? So how do we prove that? Using statements and reasons. First line is always, we always start with given. So angle 1 and 2 are right angles. That is your given statement. Angle 1 is 90. Angle 2 is 90. That is the definition of right angle. And then angle 1 is equal to angle 2. So 90 equals 90. So you substitution. So substitution property or transitive property of equality. And then lastly, you have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which is definition of congruent angles. Important new theorems. Congruent supplements are theorem. If two angles are supplements of the same angle or of congruent angle, then two angles are congruent. If angle 1 and 3 are supplements, and angle 2 and 3 are supplements, then angle 1 and 2 are uh, congruent. So if two angles are supplement of the same angle, then two angles are congruent. So supplement means 1 and 3, they are going to be 180. And then if 2 and 3 are going to be 180, then 1 and 2 are the same. So basically, let's say 1 is... Um, 80 degrees. 3 is 100 degrees. Okay, let's just say. Then, and then you know that 2 and 3 is supplement. That means that's 80. Then 1 is 80, 2 is 80. So they are congruent. So if these two pairs are supplement, and this one and this one is supplement, then 1 and 2 are congruent. So that's a very, very important uh, new theorem. If two angles are supplements of the same angle, then to the other two are also congruent, okay? Proving congruent supplements theorem. So here are the uh, diagram, one and two supplement, three and four supplement, they are uh, supplementary angles. Given one and two are supplements, three and four are supplements, then prove that one and four are congruent. And prove that, I mean, one and four are congruent, prove that two and three are congruent. So this is supplement, this is supplement, 1 and 4 are congruent, then prove that 2 and 3 are congruent by using logic. So here are, is the statement. The first one is given. The second one is definition of supplementary because 1 and 2, when you add, you get 180, that's supplementary definition. 3 and 4, when you add, you get 180, that's the definition of supplementary. Next one, you're going to substitute because here, angle 4 is 180. So instead of 180, you want to write angle 3 and angle 4 is 180. And then instead of uh, writing 180, angle 1 and one, angle 2 is 180. So this is 180, 180. You substitute it instead of 180, 180, these angles. So that's substitution property, or you can write transitive property of equality. Either one is correct. The next one is definition of congruent angles. When these two 
uh, are congruent, then they are equal to each other. That is the definition of congruent angle. Definition of congruent angle is when two angles are congruent, their measurement is equal to each other. That is the definition of congruent angles. And it's on the paper that I cast out, okay? But I can give you another one if you don't have one. So here, we're going to substitute. So 1, 2 equals 3 and 1. So instead of 4, we're going to substitute with 1, okay? So 4 and 1 are the same right here. You see that it's congruent? So that's substitution property. Therefore, if this is 2 equal to each other, this 2 equal to each other, then this 1 and this 1 equal to 3. That's refractive property of the polymer, okay? And the next one is a subtraction property. So if 1, 1 is equal to each other, then 2 and 3 is equal to each other, right? And the last one, that means 2 and 3, they're congruent. Definition of congruent angles. So basically, these two are congruent. So in order to prove, you need to have reasons. And you need to use properties. And you need to write definitions, which is uh, given to you by paper. Another important new theorem is congruent complements theorem. So complement means 90, supplement means 180. So it's the same thing, but this time it's 90. If two angles are complements of the same angle or of congruent angles, then two angles are congruent. If 1 and 2 are complements and 3 and 2 are complements, then 1 and 3 are congruent to each other. So it's same as the supplement, but this time it's 90. So basically, if 1 and 2 make 90, 3 and 2 make 90, then 1 and 3 are the same. They are congruent. Okay? So if this is 50, this is 30. If this is 50, this is 40. Then if this is 50, then that's 40. If they are supplement to each other, then this is going to be 40, 40. That's what it means. So here are linear pairs and vertical angles in proof. When you have a linear pairs, Angle ABC and angle DBF are linear pair. Let's just say. Definition of linear pair. So you're going to write definition of linear pair for the reason. ABC and DBF are supplementary. Linear pairs are supplementary. Then angle ABC, measurement angle ABC plus measurement angle DBF is 180. That is a definition of supplementary. So if you have a linear pairs, you can actually do a statement and reason as a, uh, for your proofs. When you have a vertical angles, your uh, statement will be angle 1 and 2 are vertical angles. The reason will be definition of vertical angle. And then when you have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then you write as a reason vertical angles are congruent.